So let's look at uh, discussion week five, number three. This was titled Noisemaker. And on this problem, you were, you're, uh, you're setting up this uh, uh, thing to make noise. And it's basically you're swinging something in a vertical circle, uh, this noisemaker. And so you, you, you and your friends are trying to figure out uh, how strong to make the string. And so you're wondering if you'll need to focus more on the top of the path or the bottom of the path. And so, so let's start out here by looking at uh, what will be happening at uh, the bottom uh, of your rotation. So again, you're swinging this thing around in a circle, and we'll assume that the, the velocity, in this, in this case here, that you're able to swing this with a constant, uh, constant speed, so constant magnitude of the velocity, so it's going uh, constant around in a circle. And so down here at the bottom, so again, this is a vertical circle, so we'll use our, our typical plus y, and plus x axis. So the force is acting on this thing here. So you're, you're rotating around by a string, right? So if we look here at the forces, I would have a tension going upwards because tension has to pull that way. Uh, gravity would be down mg like that. And so if we look at the sum of the forces equal ma uh, in the y direction, again, I'm calling positive y to be up, then I'd have a positive tension minus mg, and then what I would have is a positive mv squared over r, because this is our centripetal acceleration, v squared over r, right, and that always is uh, heading in towards the center of the circle. Uh, so, so it would be positive on our axis. Uh, so again, when we're doing this here, uh, my method is to add up the forces on this side and equal that to our mass times acceleration, which in this case is centripetal acceleration. So if I solve here for the tension, I get mg plus mv squared over r. So in this case here, the tension uh, is going to be the force that's in the same direction as the centripetal acceleration. So it's going to be the force responsible, but it also has to overcome mg. So it has to sort of pull up uh, the gravitational force and then uh, sort of do a little bit more on top of that in order to keep this thing moving in a uniform circular motion. So now if we look uh, at the top side, so again, we'll do the sort of same kind of picture. So we're moving in a circle, and over here uh, on the top part of this, if we look at this, uh, so now, um, right, so this, again, this rope, so the tension will be going down, the mg will be going down in this case. Again, we'll just use the same sort of xy axis here. And so if I look in this case here, uh, doing this again, this is our centripetal acceleration. So I'll have a, a negative t and a negative mg. They're both pointing in the negative direction. And then a negative mv squared over r. So what's nice about that is you can just go through and make all those negatives positive by multiplying by uh, negative 1 on all the sides. And so if I go solve for the tension, I'll get mv squared over r minus mg. So now, since these two forces are in the same direction, they can both kind of help each other uh, to to uh, be the, the, the force responsible for this centripetal acceleration, this mv squared over r. And so if you look at this case here, uh, hopefully you can see that, again, if we assume that the velocities are constant, or at least pretty close to each other, uh, at the bottom, uh, tension is going to be bigger uh, than it will be at the top. And so that would be uh, how you'd, so again, if, if you, you know, the idea of this problem is, is if I give you some velocity, you could go through and figure out how strong that string would have to be. And then just kind of a, a, a good note to end on is if you look here, so again, what happens here is the tension and the mg are, are sort of working in the same direction, so they can kind of help each other. But even more than that, what you can do is you can use this to find uh, the minimum of uh, sort of velocity uh, that, that you need to have in order to keep uh, uniform circular motion. And so, and we, we've done this with some of like the, the problems where we have carnival rides and things like that, like roller coasters and stuff. And so when this, when you come up over to here, what can happen is you can have a, a moment where the tension equals zero. So sort of at the peak here, the tension equals zero. Uh, and if the tension is equal to zero, then what happens is mg equals mv squared uh, over r. Uh, and so, yeah, you can take this and say that, well, g equals v squared over r. So this is the, the velocity. So at this velocity, uh, sometimes we'll call this the critical velocity, um, where v squared over r is exactly equal to g. Uh, so at that moment, that's where t is equal to zero. Now, uh, according to this equation over here, if you made the velocity less than this critical velocity, 
right? Then what would happen is this would be smaller than mg and the tension would be negative, which can't happen. Tension can't act in the, the negative direction. And so that's the point, uh, again, similar to some of these carnival rides and roller coasters and such, where basically then the object stops being in uniform circular motion, all right, and becomes a projectile. You know, if, if the velocity is less than that. So here we could sort of calculate this this critical velocity uh, as being uh, gr uh, square root. Um, okay, so I uh, hope this helps.